Hi, my name is Wayne Landis. I'm going to talk today about the Ecological Risk Assessment or the Upper San Francisco Estuary of California. We have lots of colleagues in the region that support us. Shauna Kuna, Krista Hoffman, Dan Wang, Darcy, Austin, Stephanie Fung, many other people are members of the technical advisory team. Our funding for the first year is from the Metro Water District. California Department of Pesticide Regulation is funding three years of this project. And for 20, not 21, the state water contractors. <clears throat> this is the status, the uh, one and a half years basically. We're taught about how to build a Bayesian network relative risk model, the conceptual model, data sets, and the GIS we're doing, the tox data, our macroenvironment community structure, and our next steps. Been doing this for a long time. We have numerous publications that talk about our research and their methods and procedures and so on. Uh, probably our latest paper is on their origin development application lessons learned. Just came out in January and it's a review of the last 15, 20 years of the relative risk model. We do this, we have assessment regions. The ones this time are we call them the North Delta to Sacramento River the Central Delta, Delta, South Delta, the confluence when the two major rivers come together, and Sushin Bay, which eventually flows out to the San Francisco Bay. We use the relative risk model and it's very straightforward causal pathway. We have sources, which are the origins of the stressors that get into the environment and go to a specific habitat location, in which they interact with the organisms that we have an interest in that are endpoints and these effects can be very highly varied. And the impacts to all those endpoints, we basically add together or present together. And those are the risks to the things we care about, the impacts. The upper San Francisco estuary conceptual model, this is without the lines of influence, with just the boxes. We have a variety of different kinds of sources, stormwater, variety of kinds of effluents land uses and the material that comes in from those like urban agriculture, impervious services. For our setup nodes, we have see two seasons we're in California, wet and dry. And then we have our risk regions to actually give the locations. Our stressors, a lot of them deal with water quality like pH temperature, a variety of chemicals like organophosphates, nanotechnoids, pyrethroids, GABA inhibitors, glyphosate, atrazine, uh, we have criteria in California for them, but we're also looking at dose response curves to try to describe the amount of chemical and the kinds of effects they'll have. The habitats, the range of quality for the things that we care about, like smelt and striped bass. Direct effects, such as direct mortality, but also indirect effects, such as habitat loss, uh, and so on. And we have impacts to different categories. Our fisheries, like the Chinook salmon, striped bass, macroenvironment community structure, water quality parameters, and these have criteria that we're supposed to meet. And we're gonna cal calculate how often those criteria are melt, are met, not melted. Um, the California Department of Pesticide Regulation focused on contaminants, hence the organophosphates and so forth. Uh, so we're gonna go through and use this conceptual model and put those kinds of materials in it. This is actually the Bayesian network. What it looks like right now is the skeleton. This is sketched out in Netica. And right now we're in the process of putting the data into these nodes, calculating how they interact and building the final medical model that describes the risk. One of the biggest issues has been the data management. We've been using GIS and R to organize it. We have lots of different kinds of information, sampling information use ArcGIS for the forms and so forth to make lots of maps. We have geo-reference data for all the observations that have occurred of which you have hundreds of thousands and also including the metadata, the supporting documentation. The data management has been a huge effort. In California, there's a seed and surf data sets. And so we are now putting those together for the last 10, 10 years. We start with about 210,000, but there are a number of duplicates and so forth. So right now we have slightly under 100,000 records or entries uh, into the information, which is a fairly large set of uh, data set to work with. Manipulate the uh, 
data, not the data itself, but the format of the data set to improve the consistency, to get real duplications. Um, and also the non-detects for um, not quantitative results and try and make sure those things are, are similarly represented. And we've coded for the separate data set and the categories that fit our conceptual model. Uh, we've plotted out the wet and dry parts. So it's wet and dry in California. And sometimes when it's wet, we have more uh, chemicals. Sometimes not. We're gonna go through and look at the effect of precipitation on the kinds of exposures that we would uh, expect. Fish numbers go up and down. Chinook go up and down with the water uh, to some degree. Um, and so highly fluctuating populations. The delta smelt, not so much, they're always low. Exposure response, we use these strange things called dose response curves, not single points to describe it. We break these curves up into high, medium, and low, where about zero to 20% we have in one category, 20 to 50% another, that anything above 50 is our, in our high toxicity. We do this for all the um, chemicals for which we can find data, which is actually a minority. We also have macroinvert community structure information on most, not all of our risk regions. We look at the benthic and water quality uh, and the benthic samples and the species and so forth that they're in that. We're actually finding out through uh, non-metric multivariate you know, scaling and we're also gonna be using other multivariate tools to actually see that temperature, pH and conductivity are important in talking about the composition of these macrobenthic communities. We've not yet put chemicals in here. Well, we're about to do that. Next steps are almost, almost to the end of 21. Consolidate the information on toxicity for the parameters. Explore the relationship between water quality, toxic concentration and precipitation. Describe the or to predict a macroinvertebrate community structure and to build exposure response relationships for predicting fish toxicity for the contaminants. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later.